yes, you'll notice that I am in a white hoodie, which means we are doing some client side work today. And we're going to see which is blazingly faster, React or Leptos. All right, incoming seizure warning. So if you're sensitive to things moving fast on the screen, avert your eyes. It actually makes me kind of sick to look at. Which one's faster? The one on the right or the one on the left? Make a comment down below and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong here in a moment. Oh, <laughs> that is uncomfortable to look at. Yes, that did say the name is the Primogen. So yes, we are gonna do a test because I've always heard that Wasm is slower than native JS, and that seems to be correct. It depends on what you're doing. And for a long time, one of the big arguments against using any Wasm framework is that it simply is just gonna be too slow on the client side. Now, if you haven't seen the server side results yet, you gotta check them out. It is jaw dropping. Do it. React, the most ubiquitous UI framework to date, it's probably been used more than jQuery has. I'm probably lying, but you know what? You can trust me. I'm a scientist. Leptos, they haven't even developed a website for their website building framework. But everyone around town, including Ryan Carniato, is telling me this framework is blazingly fast. Now, the thing is, is that React and Leptos are a bit different in nature. Uh, React, obviously pretty well known. Leptos, less known. It's actually a lot like SolidJS, which allows like fine grain reactivity to be built directly in. Now, of course, Leptos still has to cross that Wasm bridge, which is very expensive and puts itself at a huge disadvantage. But it has that fine grain reactivity, which hopefully makes up for and exceeds that disadvantage. Now, some people might be asking, why compare any of these UI frameworks? Because we love comparing UI frameworks, okay? It's, it's just incredible. Look at this. Look at how many UI frameworks have been written or tests for UI frameworks. And look, hey, there's React Hooks. It's right there. So before I show you the results, I should probably tell you what we're doing. All right, so here you go. Here's effectively the test. As you can see, each one of these little squares are slowly being updated, changing their color and writing out the name is the Primogen. Obviously, I slowed it a lot down here because I don't want to give you a seizure, but that's all the test is. How fast can I whip this thing through over and over again? Every single time it completes the 440 frames that is writing out the name is the Primogen, I will take a little timestamp. And I run it over and over and over again and gather up all the timestamps. That way I can see how long does it actually run for? How many times can we complete this loop for an extended period of time? Because you've got to let JavaScript run for a while, get it warmed up, let it feel really, really nice, allow it to apply that sweet, sweet coconut oil. So I wrote the same application for both Leptos and React. You can check out the code linked in the description down below. While you're going down, hit that subscribe button, okay? Because if you like this content, you should already have pressed the like button, but you probably need to subscribe because only half of you do. Do it. All right, so let's take a look at the data. I hate to break it to you, but Leptos actually won. Can you believe it? Does this mean we get to write everything in Rust? No, but let's be excited a little bit, okay? Okay, as you can see on Chrome, React was about 20% slower and on Firefox, React was about 80% slower. So it really showed me that there was a lot of room. Now, one thing I didn't say when showing you the example was that every single update effectively was updating approximately 1920 of those squares. So it was tons of updating. This is not how normal applications really operate. So I was very surprised at how well it actually did. And Leptos left dominating. Now, again, one of the things you got to take away from this is that Leptos is not production ready. You should not probably pivot all of Netflix to using Leptos. But I am going to finish writing a game using Leptos and manipulating the DOM, creating Vim Royale, the greatest battle royale ever to exist using Vim bindings. It's all live on Twitch, of course, you know, just saying, just saying, building it all live on Twitch. Now, again, I did want to talk about developer ergonomics, but I'm going to save that for another video. So if you like that, you want to see that, stay tuned because there is going to be another video incoming. Because I understand one of the big arguments against using Rust in general, of course, is like the borrow checker or the inconvenience or the slowdown of development. But I'll save this take for another video. Don't worry, we'll go in depth. I'll show you some examples. We'll walk through some problems. It'll be a good time. I hope this makes you excited because this makes me excited. That means the future might just be a Wasm future.
I did want to give a big shout out to Greg Johnson for helping me. I didn't have a good grasp on Wasm in general, and he kind of walked me through some of the things. What is string and turning? What is slow about Wasm? What makes it fast? And even made a couple little contributions to the project. So big shout out for Greg. Give him a follow on Twitter. The name is the Primogen. By the way, I'd like to say thank you to my wife. She's beautiful, she's wonderful, and she has supported me a lot during all these videos. So if you haven't made a comment down below to say thanks, Say it now. She'll appreciate it.